Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today we're talking about Home Assistant. We've already covered why you might want to install it, but today we're going to talk about what you need to know before you get started. We've already covered some of the reasons why you might want to install Home Assistant, a great open source software, but we haven't talked about what you need to know before you get started. One of the biggest hurdles for newcomers to Home Assistant is the hardware component. Installing this open source software onto your own machine inside of your home. There's a few things that you want to consider before you do so. There are many options available to you when it comes to installing Home Assistant. If you have an old computer laying around that you're not using, you can give it new life by running Home Assistant. It can't be free and you can keep it out of the landfill. If you don't have an old computer laying around, you might want to consider a Raspberry Pi 4 or a pre-owned mini PC from eBay. You can get either one of these relatively cheap, but if you want to get even cheaper than that, you can run Home Assistant in a VM or Docker on your existing hardware. If you don't have an old computer available, I will review a few options that are available to you, but I would like you to consider a few things. Uh, if you go the Odroid or Raspberry Pi route, I would highly recommend upgrading to an SSD for storage as your SD card will die. Uh, it's constant reading and writing 24 hours a day. It'll just kill it within a year. In the same vein, if it's going to be on all the time, you're going to want it to be energy efficient and probably small so it's not in the way. Another thing to consider would be USB ports. You will need USB ports for your Z-Wave or Zigbee dongles. You can always get an extender, but you need that first USB port to connect them to. As far as installation methods, there are four ways to install Home Assistant. You can install Home Assistant OS as a Docker container, Home Assistant Core, or Home Assistant Supervised, but really the two most common ways are Home Assistant OS or Home Assistant Docker container. I'm aware many of you might not know the difference between an operating system and a Docker container. An operating system is installed directly onto the hardware. When your computer turns on, it would boot into the operating system. Think of Microsoft Windows or Mac OS. Docker is a way to run multiple programs on the same hardware while keeping them separated. This separation is beneficial for delegation of resources, management, backups, updates, and it offers a lot of control if you know what you're doing. Docker is more advanced. It is not inherently harder, but I do not recommend Docker for the first time as someone who wants to use Home Assistant. However, if you already use Docker or plan to use other Docker containers, it would not be difficult to install Home Assistant as a Docker. The upside is shared hardware and ease of management. The downside is that you will not be able to integrate other applications into your Home Assistant install. They'll have to be separate Dockers. I touched on this briefly on the introduction video, but I want to elaborate on that. I have two different independent softwares on the screen right now, Frigate on the left and Node-RED on the right. I have both of these softwares installed in my Home Assistant and separately as a Docker container. Here's both of their listings on Docker Hub where you can see they're maintained by different groups in a completely different set of instructions and manuals, but I can still install them together on Docker on the same machine. Here you can see them both in the add-on store. This is inside Home Assistant. Instead of going to Docker Hub, you'd go to your add-on store and then you can install them to your add-ons inside Home Assistant. These live in Home Assistant and not separately outside of Home Assistant. It's the same software, the same uses, just one is on Docker with more control of hardware. You can give it more RAM, you can give it more storage, and the other is inside of Home Assistant where it's a little bit limited to your Home Assistant installation. I hope that makes sense. Um, Docker is sharing hardware. Home Assistant OS is using all of the hardware. If you go the Docker route, you'll need to have your third-party applications hosted separately on Docker. If you're going the Home Assistant OS route, you'll be using those as add-ons inside of Home Assistant OS. Now we've talked about the different types of installations, I'm gonna go back to hardware. We've got a couple choices ahead of us. My number one pick is still an old computer. You likely have one laying around, and since Home Assistant doesn't require that much power, a machine that's five to 10 years old could still run this pretty well. The downside is it's not as power efficient as a smaller computer, and it might require a little bit extra know-how to boot into your BIOS depending on manufacturer. I do recommend if you go this route that you take the time to upgrade to an SSD if you aren't already on one. They're so cheap and it'll really make your experience that much better. My next best pick would be Home Assistant Yellow, which Home Assistant themselves are, have collaborated with Raspberry Pi to create a device that is perfect for their software. 
I think this would be a great choice because it's specifically made for Home Assistant and would have everything you need and not much that you don't. It would have Zigbee built in so you don't have to get a USB dongle and it would have an M2 expansion slot for a SSD or AI accelerator such as Google Coral. Downside is, as of this month, it's not out yet and it's a little bit more on the expensive side at $125 expected for when it comes out. Similar to Home Assistant Yellow, I would recommend a Raspberry Pi or Odroid. They're small, cheap, and power efficient. Tons of people are using them, so if there's a specific Raspberry Pi issue or limitation that you're trying to overcome, chances are someone's already done it. The downside is you're gonna have to upgrade to an SSD. It will kill your SD card. Another downside to these devices is that they could be underpowered for heavy use, specifically video processing. A lot of streams on Frigate will really push your Raspberry Pi to its limit. Lastly, Raspberry Pis are really hard to find right now. They're supposed to be about $40, but you'll see them on Amazon for $100 and up. The prices are dropping, but I would not recommend spending more than $40 on these devices because you're gonna get $40 worth of performance. Next up, we have mini or micro PCs. I'm all about reducing, reusing, and recycling, so these are a great choice to buy off of eBay. They're very cheap, there's tons of variety, um, they're small, they're quiet, and they're very power efficient. Downsides are they're hard to compare specs. You might need to figure out how to install an operating system on them, and you need to pay attention to what you're buying. A lot of these are gonna have no operating system, which is great, we don't need one. Um, it'll be cheaper without one, but you do want one that has an SSD, one that has USB ports, and you wanna make sure that you're getting the right power cord. For some reason, these never ship with a power cord. The downside on top of that, um, performance wise, is it's gonna be a little hard to compare specs. These often have weird, tiny, power efficient processors, and that's gonna be fine for Home Assistant. It might be a little underpowered for heavy use, again, if you're running something like Frigate and processing video stream or a lot of videos. But general use should be great and very cost effective. Last up, we have a virtual machine. This is not gonna be for our beginners or amateurs. This is if you already have a machine that you're running other services on, you can easily spin up a Home Assistant OS VM and play around for no additional cost. Uh, this is a great route to go. I did this because I already had hardware that I was running other services and you can scale it as you need. If it needs to get bigger or smaller, um, it's fine. VMs are a little bit more difficult, especially when passing through hardware. Um, you can run into some issues with different USB ports changing as the host computer changes. Uh, I would only recommend this if you already have VMs. This is not where you wanna start. For the rest of this series, I'll be using this Dell Optiplex 3050 micro PC that I bought off of eBay. Um, all in with the power cord is gonna be about 80 bucks. This has eight gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, and I had to pay extra for a power cable. This will be a little bit more powerful than a Raspberry Pi and already have an SSD for about the same price, 85 bucks on Amazon, but you would still need to get an SSD and a case for it. So I think we're coming out ahead and we should be keeping this project pretty cheap going forward. I think that covers it for what we need to know before we install Home Assistant. We've reviewed the difference between Home Assistant operating system and Home Assistant as a Docker container. We've also talked about some of the different devices or machines that you can install Home Assistant on. Going forward, I'll have a video installing it on a Raspberry Pi 4B with an SSD, and then I'll also have a separate video installing it on the Dell Optiplex that I showed earlier. If you have any questions, please comment and let me know or reach out. We are on social media, Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm here to help, and I hope that this was informative. Let me know what you think.